Hey everybody, welcome back to Tuesday Bingo, where we are working hard to help you connect with your destination better. Today we surveyed natives, locals, and tourists alike to figure out the top 10 most recommended foods for Salem, Massachusetts. Starting off our list, the number 10 spot is going to the hard clam. These bivalves are constantly associated with New England, and rightfully so. The hard clam is found in waters from Florida all the way up to northern Canada, but is exceptionally abundant in New England and New Jersey. I needed to throw that in there real quick. Way to go, Jersey. If you're from these areas, or even if you've done some research on this, you might have heard of something called clam digging. Clam digging is when you go out into shallow waters with a rake and literally rake out the clams. This is where they live. They sit there and all they do is collect food by filter feeding all day. Also kind of cleaning out the water. Now, anatomy of clams, it's pretty simple here. There are two adductor muscles for the clam's two hard shells that help, you know, the clam open and close like this. Besides those two adductor muscles, the clam also has a foot that it uses to bury itself into the sand. Clams have a very mild fishy taste and a not so overpowering briny flavor that's reminiscent of the waters that they were harvested from. They can be eaten raw, my favorite. They can be cooked into soups, like the ever so popular New England clam chowder. That's the white one. They can even be made into dishes like Clams Casino, which is baked clams that are topped with a breadcrumb bacon mixture. And since raw clams are my personal favorite, I would definitely recommend scouting out a raw bar while you're in Salem. This is a place you go and order clams on the half shell, which is what they're referred to when they're raw. You might even find some oysters or something there, but definitely try those clams when you're in New England. You will not be disappointed. Number nine goes to steak tips. Now the name here, steak tips, usually refers to a manageable sized piece of beef bottom sirloin to be exact. This section of the cow is often said to be very similar to like a hanger steak, if you're familiar with that. The steak tips here in Salem have a very nice beefy flavor, and since their texture is looser than most cuts, they take very well to marinades, so the flavor gets doubled up. Soak in, in the juices. The number eight spot goes to the American Lobster. Extremely famous in New England, it only makes sense that the American Lobster made the list for Salem. This shelled creature ranks in at the largest crustacean in the world, potentially weighing in at 44 pounds. And although this is incredibly large, 44 pounds is the exception. Most of the lobsters that you're gonna be eating are probably gonna fall between the one to nine pound range. A 44 pound lobster sounds terrifying. I would probably be running the other way if I saw one of those. These sweet tasting crustaceans have an eating experience that's similar to a cross between crab and shrimp. The meat is both soft and firm, but it's very easy to bite through. You might find these grilled, you might find them boiled, you might find them in a sandwich like a lobster roll, but whenever you have lobster, expect two things. Lots of melted butter and some seriously delicious bites. Number seven goes to roast beef. In the United States, the ORB is traditionally served as an entire roast for like a Sunday dinner. But Salem takes advantage of this meat every day of the week. They slice it up and put it on a sandwich. The roast beef will be placed between two slices of bread and can be served hot or cold. And other ingredients might include lettuce, tomato, mayo, maybe some mustard, maybe some cheese, maybe some horseradish, or perhaps some onion. But maybe, just maybe, you might get it three ways. This would be a roast beef sandwich with barbecue sauce, mayo, and cheese. The ultimate of all Salem roast beef sandwich experiences. When I went to Salem last year, so many people said you need to get the roast beef sandwich three way. So I did it and I did not regret it. The number six spot goes to the Italian dish, the pizza pie. This leaven crusted pie is served with tomato sauce and cheese on top at its most familiar point. But variations in different toppings let the orderer or the creator go hog wild. They can be topped with basically anything. In America, pizza is generally eaten as a hand food and is most commonly cooked as a big circular pie. This pie is then cut into eight slices, then picked up by the eater and folded into half of a triangle, half of one of the slices. So it kind of looks like a paper airplane 
The crust is chewy, the sauce is tangy, and the cheese is stringy. Some say there's no such thing as a bad pizza, and most will probably agree. Get your friends and family together, crack open a couple brewskis, and go to town, Salem style. Number five goes to the cold dessert, ice cream. For those of you who haven't experienced this sweet summertime dairy-based sensation, you are truly missing out. The word ice cream gets thrown around loosely, and it can really refer to a couple of things, like frozen yogurt, custard, sorbet, gelato, really anything that resembles it. And you can eat it numerous ways. You can get it in an ice cream cone, where you like lick it off the ice cream cone. You can get it in a bowl, or um, if it's really hot out and you have the cone or something, you might have to eat it off your hands because it's melting too quick. So cone, cup, your hands. The three ways to eat ice cream. Flavors and toppings are also endless. Some of the more common flavors include vanilla, chocolate, pistachio, and chocolate chip. Rum raisin is my favorite. Caramel fudge swirl, cotton candy, mango, I don't know. The list goes on and on. And they can really also be topped with anything, whether it's sprinkles, chocolate chips, different kinds of candies, cookie dough, fudge sauce, caramel, whatever. Now when you're in Salem and you pass an ice cream shop, you should definitely stop in to indulge. The number four spot goes to the city's breakfast food, but from a very specific place. Red Sandwich Shop is located right in the thick of it on Central Street. It's been serving breakfast and has been a favorite by many for over 50 years at this point. That's half a century's worth of eggs. Think about that. At this place, you can get your traditional, classic, American-type breakfast, eggs, sausage, bacon, hash browns, French toast, all that kind of stuff. And breakfast is cool and all, but this building has plenty of history that dates well beyond its 50 years of scrambling eggs. The restaurant found its home in the building of the old London Coffee House, and that's been around since the 1700s. This coffee house was a place for the Patriots to hang out pre-American Revolution. The building was also a gathering spot for the oldest boys club in America, the Salem Fraternity. So while you're sitting there, eating your eggs, eating your French toast, drinking your orange juice, drinking your coffee, think about all the things that happened in this building, how long it's been around, and take a second, express some gratitude, and thank Salem and all the building's previous owners for keeping this structure here. History is something that will never go away. Number three. The number three spot on our list goes to candy. Salem and Halloween are synonymous. Halloween and candy are synonymous. Does this make Salem and candy also synonymous? I think it does. And although this is a very vague category, it was a lot of fun looking into it. Candy is a confection made where sugar is the primary ingredient. I never really thought about it before, but candy is really intended only for one person. It's not a shared dessert, and I can't think of a candy that you would share. They're generally small pieces made for the individual, rather than large things that you cut up meant for groups. They're also mainly intended as a snack food. It's not something that you would have sitting around for a formal dessert after dinner. An example of a very large category of candy would be called sugar candies. These would include familiar favorites like gummy bears, lollipops, or even things like fudge. Another big group of candies is referred to as chocolate candies. These are exactly what they sound like, candy made with chocolate. Now let's take a second and look at a little history here. Before the 1900s, candy was actually a very popular street food. It was sold on carts up and down the street, kind of like a hot dog cart or like mixed nuts that you would find in New York. But the thing was, it was really only found unwrapped. And eventually, after years and years and years of dirt and bug abuse, the candy makers thought it might be worthwhile for them to wrap their sweets. I just thought that was kind of interesting. But here in Salem, there's one specific kind of candy that calls the city home. The Gibraltar, the first commercially sold candy in America. These guys were first made in Salem in 1806 and first came in flavors like peppermint or lemon, very fresh kinds of flavors. Their creator was a confectioner by trade. A confectioner is somebody that makes candy. But they were made and sold resourcefully and out of desperation. All of the ingredients that this confectioner used were actually gifted to her after her family suffered from a shipwreck right outside of Salem. Since they lost everything, the people of the city actually gave her these ingredients to create something. She then sold these candies on the street to support her family, and ever since then, they've been in the Salem history books. 
The number two spot isn't just for the movie theater. It's also for walking around Salem. Popcorn is a popped, poofed, expanded corn kernel that can be eaten plain or topped with nearly anything. But here in Salem, things get a little kooky in the best way possible. Chocolate coated, drizzled with caramel, flavored with strawberries and cream, cookies and cream, peanut butter flavored like cinnamon buns or French toast, the list goes on and on. Trying all these flavors sounds extremely addicting, but also extremely worthwhile. Now, I was always curious why or how popcorn popped, until my Food Network idol, Alton Brown, explained it to me. In the tiny corn kernel, there's a very small amount of moisture. When those kernels get heated up, that little bit of water expands, poof, popcorn. The number one food in Salem, Massachusetts, goes to the extremely unique Chop Suey Sandwich. Chop suey on its own, not in the sandwich, is an Americanized Chinese food dish that looks like a, just like a big jumble of things. The main protein that you would find in this jumble is usually chicken or pork, but is accompanied by other things like eggs and a bunch of vegetables. Bean sprouts are the main ingredient and the superstar in chop suey. You'll also find onions, celery, maybe some cabbage. All of this stuff is cooked in a thick soy sauce gravy that just barely holds it all together. Very loose, it's all very loose. Chop suey, this dish, is customarily served over rice, but not in Salem. Here, they use a hamburger bun. But how does chop suey taste? It's really a sweet and salty mixture of vegetables that's flavored with those meats. The chop suey sandwich here is the city's culinary claim to fame, and has had a home here in the city's Salem Willows since the early 1900s. This is a local family-friendly seaside park that's definitely worth visiting if you go in the summertime. It started with first-generation Chinese immigrants that came overseas. The owners had to tailor their home recipes to fit the taste buds of the American citizens. And timing worked out perfectly here because the development of the Salem Willows aligned perfectly with an influx of Chinese immigrants. From that point on, this sandwich has been making history as the first bite from the Salem Willows is the unofficial start to summer for many locals and visitors alike. So there you have it guys, the top 10 foods for Salem, Massachusetts. If you enjoyed this video or got any value from it, please consider dropping a like or subscribing the channel. We would definitely appreciate it. If there's anything you would like to add to this list, please drop it in the comments below. If you agree or disagree with anything on this list, please drop it in the comments below. If there's any places that you would recommend getting any of these things, please drop it in the comments below. We're working hard to develop this community and the research that I'm doing might not reflect your experience. So share those experiences. Help everybody that's going to Salem get the most out of their trip. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, travel well.